Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to an edition of my new segment, um, which I've decided to call this time the Delta News, just for want of a title, really. Um, well, not really, but anyway. Yeah, it's good to uh, um, put out a brief video. At this moment in time, while I'm talking, um, there are some uh, buffoons um, um, whose appearance looks a bit human um, giving announcements at number 10 Downing Street in London so rather than me wait for them to uh, regurgitate any scripts that have been handed down to their offices for them to then present to the waiting public I thought I would just uh, do my own new segment and give you the facts of the extension to the lockdown before or at the same time as they do. Because guess what? You don't have to be a member of the inside club to uh, to kind of know what's going on. Or, for example, in this case, what will never, ever happen, which is a return to normal. Um, but anyway, that would be speculation, wouldn't it? But of course, we know up to what extent the gaslighting has been happening. We know of the... Uh, um, how can I say, like the conflicting and and uh, contradictory reports that are constantly being churned out by the press, the media, be it radio, whatever, whatever outlets, etc., uh, etc. Et and it's just this is just a continuation of it. Every now and then these announcements crop up where they make a big announcement around an announcement, which is what they've done this time as well. The Prime Minister's got to be talking at five o'clock uh, and down the street, which ended up at six o'clock. It's now nearly half past six. So they'll still be talking away with their pre-picked journalists in the room, um, addressing pre-arranged and scripted questions and answers, because that is exactly how it works. How do I know that? Because I've sat in meetings where political press officers and uh, such like um, um, go through these very processes with the designated, uh, as it were, uh, spokespeople, in this case Johnson, or whatever other political person it may be, Hancock, whatever, and of course the scientific community in this event have been dragged in, haven't they, or not dragged in, used <laughs> um, to push home, uh, to further push home a, a narrative that will stick with us forever, I'm afraid, but anyway, to a larger or lesser degree. But that's what's been happening, or that's what is happening at this very moment as I talk to you. And so I decided, rather than wait for that, I'd have a look myself. Because this stuff, as I've said before in previous videos, is always to be found online. <gasps> online. Now, I know people close to me who use me researching online as a stick to hit me with. Right? Um, because, of course... Anybody who researches outside of the mainstream media kind of realms is considered a conspiracy theorist. And again, that's the trickery of placing those narratives into, into the public domain. Conspiracy theorists, of course, being a classic that dates back to the 60s. I uh, won't bore you with the historical facts, but it has to do with the Kennedy um, theatre. Um, but, you know, that these that this is an issue that people already have that blockage in their mind. Say, oh, I don't perhaps question something because it will put me into that category, etc., etc. So they're, they're obviously the classic problems that we have to deal with here. Uh, but anyway, uh, before I go off on too many tangents, because there's so much to say and only about half an hour to squeeze it in. I'll try and keep it less than half an hour. I don't want to put you off already before we've even started. But there was a roadmap that was announced a while back by our government. And uh, the roadmap, at the end of it all, was supposed to kind of rejoicefully reach its climax with the loosening of all the other bits and bobs of lockdowns by the 21st of June. That is how the media portrayed it all. Um, but to achieve this goal, it was told, or we were told, we had to go through four steps. Step one to four. And of course, um, there were fee, four sorry key factors to determine the easing of the lockdown. It was announced 
a while back and reaffirmed, uh, etc. Today, I did take a little listen into BBC Radio. Um, and anyway, and the four factors that they look at are vaccine deployment, effectiveness, infection rates, and variance of concern. So all of those factors have to be um, satisfactorily uh, um, you know, achieved uh, in terms of safety, with a small s, before they can then move on to the next step. And this would be then now um, step four, which is what we're waiting for to happen, allegedly. But there's, of course, a caveat to that. And the caveat is that it never said we were going to leave on the 21st. Sharp intake of breath. It said not before the 21st of June. And this is something that we've always been talking about, some of us more than others. Um, and that's uh, the wording that gets used, right? You know, people have been going on about the 21st now. I'm not talking about in the mainstream, you're hearing it at bus stops or in shops or wherever it is you hang out or have to hang out with people who are pretty oblivious to what's going on. Um, and it was always about the lockdown, lockdown, and lockdown, and when it was going to get lifted, etc. And they seem to nail these dates in their heads because it's been mentioned. They don't look at it properly. Um, and I'm just looking right now on the government website, gov.uk. Anybody can do it. Quite remarkable, really. Um, and, you know, step three, not before the 17th of May, which is the one we're still in. And step four, quite clearly, not before the 21st of June. Now, me reading this out to you is not an endorsement of these measures. It's me making a point that uh, we need to really pay attention if we're going to be looking at sources. And I'm talking more about myself more than anybody else here, really. I'm not here preaching to the uh, to the choir. Please forgive me if I sound like I am. I'm not. Um, but uh, I have to be mindful that, you know, the devil is literally in the detail. They haven't lied to us. So the, hock, the, the shock horror response, of course, uh, is totally unnecessary. And some of us, I, gather, I, I guess, and, and probably it's better like that, would have already thought to themselves, well, who cares when they officially announce anything? I'm going to crack on with my life, which is exactly how I approach it. Uh, and it's how I would advise anybody to approach it. Um, you know, but like I say, far be it from me to preach to other people as to how to lead their lives. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, we've all got our things to deal with and we all deal with them in our own individual and unique ways, even though the mainstream and general narratives in general terms, you know, be they schooling systems or whatever, would have you believe you're not unique, would have you believe you're a speck of nothing that evolved from nothing, <laughs> which, of course, is all part of this massive lie. Um, but I won't go off on that tangent. Anyway, right, so the lifting of the lockdown will be delayed for four weeks. Um, that's it. I'm not going to speculate anymore on that. That's just it. So whether that happens or not, doesn't really matter. I'm just saying this, or I'm telling you this, or, or highlighting this really just to highlight again, um, like I say, the switching of narratives constantly from the media, constantly from those who have been selected to be the mouthpieces and stand in front of the cameras in Downing Street or wherever it is, uh, where, by the way, at the moment, there's an anti-lockdown protest. There are videos showing it live right now on YouTube to go, go and have a look. Um, in fact, I posted a link on the Stand Up South Coast group today. So it's in there. If you want to look back at it rather than follow it live, then it will definitely be in there. Um, but, you know, these things need to be happening every single day, and they seem to be somewhere in the UK, which is great news, that people are not shutting up about it now. And that seems to be gaining more resonance. Um, let's hope it's not too late, because if the stats are to be believed, which they're not really, then uh, two-thirds of the population are already over the edge of that cliff. Anyway, right, so, um, but this is interesting as well. It was, uh, I heard today, it was said today that there was a poll carried out 
um, and the poll suggested that 71% of those polled um, support the decision to uh, extend the measures by another four weeks or not lift them on the 21st. So I don't know what I don't know what polls they took, they undertook, who they asked, um, or wherever. I haven't partaken in any poll, but 71%—that's a lot of people. Um, of course, <laughs> we'd have to have a look to see how many people they polled to get a, a, an accurate assessment on how it won't be that many. But they roll these stats out to make it sound like you know. Uh, Everybody's on board with it, and of course, it's for the safety of the nation and humankind in general. And um, and turning the screw more and more on those of us who do not comply, not because we feel rebellious today, but because uh, well, we've gone out gone out the wrong side of our beds, beds, but because we've done some uh, some more than sufficient research on this and spoken to some more than qualified people about this topic, um, uh, people you will not get to hear about or see about or read about in the mainstream media at all. Uh, for that very reason um, so that's why we have the conviction we do because we know from very very good sources um, plus of course our own discernment and our own co common sense and logic and everything else our own observations and everything else um, plays a part in that as well to help us draw those conclusions so anyway I'm just looking at my notes here I put them underneath this time because it makes it a bit easier uh, very hot day today, by the way. I just thought I'd mention very, very hot day today. Um, you may or may not know I live down in Bournemouth, on the south coast of England, and um, it's a seaside resort. Nice sandy beaches, miles of it actually. If you want to ever Google Bournemouth, then do. It's a nice part of the world. Um, and on a hot day like today, it is perfect. Perfect. Um, do I ever use the beach? No, hardly ever. It's always the same, isn't it? If it's on your own doorstep, you never make use of it. Anyway, coming back to this topic, um, yeah, so we spoke about the four key factors that have to be adhered with in order for them to activate, as it were. Step four, well, of course, with the invention of all these new variants, that's never going to happen. So again, the devil is in the detail already, the narrative already is set up kind of thing to sort of, well, we never said that, we said this, and look, you know, we already said, here's another one for you, that they're going to encourage double doses now. Because uh, they said that if you only have the, if the one dose, it's only 30% effective against the new Delta variant, the Indian one. But of course, if you have a double dose, then suddenly your effectiveness for that dosage goes up to 80-85%. Is 2 times 30 80-85? Not really. But anyway, um, hence they want to get people uh, to get the second dose as quickly as possible. And also, and it was said today, and they didn't make any bones about it, um... They want another 10 million at least inoculated. That was very official. I came straight out with it today. That's what I heard. So um, be warned. But, you know, 80, 85 percent success even rate um, against um, something that has a 99.7 percent success rate of survival in any case. It's bizarre. People have forgotten what it, this was all about originally. Now everyone, they've got the more squabbling about variants now and about how many doses you should take. Like, that's the norm now. Exactly how we foresaw it to happen. And, um, hey, presto, here it is. You know, I said this to somebody, uh, a close friend of mine, actually, very recently. This is nothing to do with us being geniuses or, or seeing into the future, having a crystal ball. It's looking at what's happened in the past, paying a bit more ten attention to what be, is said, and, of course, having an understanding of how the hierarchy of power works, um, because that is vital in all of this to then gain a, a real understanding of where to look, where not to look, um, and all the rest of it. I could uh, leave that for another another day. But, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting because it falls in line very much with... Uh, I use a flat earth analogy, for example. I spoke to somebody only a few days ago who is a scientist by trade. Um, in fact, this person um, has looked into AI and stuff many, many, many years ago and all that. And he's very knowledgeable. 
Um, but when we got talking about the shape of the earth, for example, in the realm that we're not in, whatever, this, that, and the other, general conversation, um, he pointed out to me uh, Aristosthenes as an example of how to prove the shape of the earth. The reason why I'm giving you this example is I'm going to come to a point here um, that will make sense. Now, I then responded, I don't know if you know what that example is, for those who don't know, uh, Eratosthenes was part of the Greek establishment of over 2,000 years ago, so we're told anyway, and he devised an experiment whereby, to prove the Earth was a ball, he had two poles, although it varies because some say they had wells in the ground, we don't really know, so we don't even know that yet, for sure, and yet the history books suggest this is absolutely, you know, chiseled in stone this irrefutable so let's go with that for the moment anyway so we had two poles and because of the sun if you could capture or look at the shadows cast at the same time from those two poles you will find that one shadow is cast longer than the other because of course we're on a ball but of course i pointed out that hang on a minute not only how on earth did he manage to see the shadows at the same time back then hundreds of miles apart from each other what did he do did he get his mate to check his phone did they facetime each other how did they do that back then over 2000 years ago but let's just say they did um then of course how about if you have two poles like that but a local sun rather than a sun that's far 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 away then you would have the same effect one would cast a longer shadow and one wouldn't cast a shadow at all because it'd be right above it so in other words the proof or the evidence that's given for that to be in the school curriculum to be then progressed into factual for kids to learn that we live on a globe earth when of course that very model and that experiment would have worked on flat earth as well and add into the mix that there's no way he could have compared both shadows at the same time in those days technologically wouldn't have been possible at least according to what we know then suddenly you've got a counter argument because you've done a little bit of research about it and you used a bit of common sense right and he, as a scientist, had never thought of the the uh, the alternative of having a, a closed sun because he worked off the presupposed position that we're on a globe. And this is the issue. And this is the issue of what we talk about here when we talk about inoculations and we talk about people wearing face masks and people feeling intimidated, losing their jobs, keeping their jobs, all the rest of it. The media and the role the media play. The way we also in the truth communities are inclined to cherry pick the headlines from the newspapers and all the rest of it that sort of suit us because we need that kind of solace a little bit. We need that boost and we need a bit of positivity when in actual fact, the horrible truth is it's all scripted, all of it, the whole lot. None of it is left by chance. There's no coincidences in the storytelling. The government isn't incompetent. The incompetence is scripted. It's meant to be like this. Everything you're learning and hearing from that law is fake. And it's as simple as that. And we have to remind ourselves of that. But anyway, um, and, but the reason why, just getting back to that, <laughs> the reason why I use the example of the, uh, um, the Eratosthenes thing is that if a scientist has never thought that there might be an alternative argument to that and just runs with it, then I'm imagining most people would do you know, and and that's that's uh, that's that's really an issue. So it's this it's the way people approach um, approaching not only amongst themselves by having a conversation about it, but also by using their discernment and and understanding that there are many 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 areas that you can gain your information from, draw on your information from, and it doesn't have to be your television or your newspaper or your Sky News app, which is next to your track, track and Trace app, probably. Anyway, I thought I would just uh, mention now, oh yes, and of course the government also made it clear today that, uh, or they will be making it clear, like I said, they're probably announcing this at the same time as me. Look at that. Um, they also said that leaving the lockdown, that process needs to become irreversible. So once we've gone, we're gone, be like Brexit. Um, so we'll wait and see on that. But of course, like I said, I wouldn't rely at all 
on anything anybody mainstream says to any of us, anybody, ever. <laughs> um, because be it at your peril if you do, you'll only get disappointed. Anyway, so on that note, I just wanted to throw out a quick video. It's already nearly 20 minutes. What else has happened in the last few days? Oh, yes, we've had the G7, of course. Um, almost didn't notice that. Down the road here in Cornwall, which uh, I found, I, I heard something nice, interesting today. I've read a post, somebody put something up about uh, St. Michael's Mount in Cornwall. There's a similar one in France called Mont Saint-Michel, which I've been to. I've not been to the Cornish one, though. Uh, and anyway, and that's supposed to be apparently, allegedly, on one of the ley lines. And one of the reasons why the G7 summit is taking place where it has in Cornwall has some sort of other meaning to it. I don't know. I've not researched that properly. Um, but uh, there are videos out there encouraging you to do so and to take a little look. But that, that sounds quite interesting. Um, it's all connected anyway. Um, you know, we'll always have to remember that. Every time these sorts of events happen, it's always coupled with numerology and symbology, be it the dates, be it the names of the people taking part, be it the colours, be it whatever. There's so much. So once you see it, you can't stop seeing it. You can't unsee it. So much to see. Uh, but there we go. G7, that was, uh, I don't even know, what did they discuss? Apart from global warming, did they discuss that? Global wrong anyway but yeah don't know never been to Cornwall by the way um have to go there supposed to be a beautiful part of the world southwest England there we go so that was that uh, and apart from that I don't think there was anything else I was going to mention oh there was one more thing I was going to mention and that was one of the reasons uh why I highlighted that point also earlier about scientists not looking at it from an alternative point of view because there are always two sides for every story um, another thing that happened only yesterday was a professional football player killed over and ended up having a heart attack in the middle of a football match in a big tournament here called the Euro uh, 2020. I know it's 2021, but it's a tournament that was planned for last year, but because of what's happened, they're doing it this year. And this guy who played for Denmark collapsed on the football pitch, and according to the media, his heart stopped for seven minutes. But uh, as if that wasn't enough, um, he did survive and he apparently is feeling better. And they did, they did play that match on about an hour and a half after the incident. When eventually he got to hospital, they did then resume the match. And the team he played for ended up losing actually 1-0. Not that that's important. But what is interesting is that uh, I looked at a lot of headlines today online. And there was in the Italian press mention of him having just received his Pfizer, you know what, on the 31st of May. Now, I don't know if there's a correlation between the intervention, the inoculation, and him keeling over on a football pitch. But we'll put it this way. It's exceedingly rare, pretty much unheard of, that a footballer just falls over and has a heart attack. Um, it's food for thought. I wouldn't jump on that necessarily. But then again, it, there might be something to it. Um, anyway oh yeah and uh, what else was there there was something about the Olympics as well I read very recently that I think something like 10,000 volunteers have refused to volunteer as well uh, for something to do with protective equipment and things like that um, and all that stuff so it's just all much ado about nothing because as we know there ain't a killer virus knocking about killing anyone anyway. Never has been. All right. On that uh, note, I'm going to um, head off and do my landlady a cup of tea. Bless her, because it's been extremely hot the last couple of days here, and she's suffering a little bit, I think. I gave her my uh, fan. Um, and uh, so it gets a bit of fresh air in her room, but um, yeah. Not nice weather. Especially if you're a bit too old, you've got some underlying health issues. You don't want to be wearing a mask in this weather, that's for sure. Uh, and yet there's still plenty of people out there who are. It's mental. 
absolutely mental. Anyway, there we go. So there's my new segment for now. Um, if anything else springs to mind, I will pop one out again at some stage. But uh, for the moment, I hope everybody is doing well. I hope anybody who watches this who may have been at the um, anti-lockdown jam today, you know, do let us know how it was. I'll be looking out to see how it is. I'm going to pop, have a look at some of the footage as well to see what's going on there. There is a London gig going on on the 26th of June. So that's a week Saturday. And there is also one penciled in for Bournemouth on the 3rd of July as well, which is also a Saturday. Um, there will be some in between bits and bobs going on as well, but that's they're the two main events that certainly I'll be participating in. Um, and then we will see. Uh, but apart from that, we just continue to fight. No means no. It's that simple. It's that simple. All right. So on that note, it's goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from me. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the hot weather. Stay safe, but not the way that lot mean it. I mean it in the real way. You know, stick to like-minded people. Stay strong. And speak to you all soon. And thank you very much for um, supporting my channel, of course. Bless you all. Till then. Bye-bye.